as I said, this is uh, this is the last day of a four-day trip for us. In fact, it's the last leg of this day. When we get back to Charlotte, which is where we're based, we're going home. I'm obviously coming back here to Madison, Wisconsin, where I live. Sully lives out in uh, Danville, California. The flight attendants live in Pittsburgh and in uh, Winston and in Asheville. And as I indicated earlier, I've just been released from training on this airplane. I was transitioned to the Airbus. I've never flown it before. Just completed training the uh, very week before, and this was my very first flying trip as a, as a regular co-pilot. Now, we can only be qualified at one airplane type at a time, because while the planes might look the same to you, I mean, it's an airplane, it has engines, it's a jet, a jet uh, they're entirely different. They have different systems, they have different procedures, different checklists, different ways of operating. So to make sure that we don't make a mistake in a critical time, we're only allowed to fly one aircraft type at a time. It's not only just a new airplane for me, it's, it's my first trip with Sun. U.S. Airways has 5,000 pilots. At the time, he worked there for 30 years, I worked there for 20, 23, and I don't recall ever even seeing him before. I met him first the Monday before that trip, when we started out. Now, you wouldn't think this would be a good mix for us to act as a team, but that's why in the airline business, we have to depend on our training and our procedures for us to act as a team, because we can't depend on knowing the people that work with. Now we're holding short of the end of the runway before I do. I'm flying this way. Uh, normally, captain and first officer swap legs. We go through the trip that way. It just happens to be my way to fly. The air traffic controller tells us to position and hold. Sully taxes the airplane out, binds it up with the center line stripes. I put my feet up on the brakes to hold the brakes. And Sully says, your aircraft. And I say, my aircraft, which is the terminology we use for transferring control of the airplane. Believe it or not, a lot of accidents have happened because nobody's been flying the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a big emphasis with the FAA that somebody flies the airplane at all times. <laughs> We're clear for takeoff. I reach over, grab the thrust levers, push them up into the toga, take off and go around, detent. Sully watches the engines uh, Engine indications accelerate, and uh, as we roll down the runway, he calls out our standard callouts: Katie, V1, rotate. I pull back on the side stick we use, just like an F-16 fighter in Airbus, and the airplane leaves the runway. Sully calls out positive rate, meaning positive rate of climb. I say gear up. Now those, those callouts we say exactly the same way every time we fly, and we say nothing else. It's important for us to be able to communicate instantly. Using the standard terminology is a very important part of that. Now, it's actually become a nice day, as I said earlier, even though it was uh, overcast and snowing earlier. In fact, Sully, at this moment, looks up the Hudson River and makes the comment, What a view of the Hudson! Which I thought was kind of ironic because he seemed up close in exactly four minutes. <laughs> We're climbing out, we're raising our flaps, we're accelerating. At 3,000 feet in the air, I pitch the nose over to accelerate to our final stage climb profile, which is about 250 knots of airspeed. And something catches my eye. And I look up, and, and right ahead, but slightly to the right, I see this line of geese. They're, they're far too close for us to maneuver around. And I remember seeing them all spaced out in a line. That's why I always thought that they were geese. And about that time, I hear Sully say, birds. And that fast, we're on top of them. Their, their bodies are impacting the, the airplane. They're hitting the wings and the fuselage. And at least two of them went through the core of each engine. It sounded like, like hail impacting the airplane. And before we could recover and figure out what was wrong and what we had left, both engines immediately lose thrust. They make a very high, winding sound at flying power, and both of them were just instantly reduced to nothing. I mean, the shock of it, you know, for a pilot was that it felt like having a bad cold. It felt like my head swelled to twice its size, and I'm looking at the world through a fog. We have the nose up in the air. We were at minimum airspeed to start with, and we just wiped all the power off the airplane. You could just feel the thing sag in the air. You could feel the deceleration. 
and I'm pushing the nose forward to try to keep the airplane from stalling in that situation. And, and Sully decides to uh, take over control of the airplane, which is his prerogative as the captain. And he says, my aircraft. And I said, your aircraft. <laughs> Thank you. 